Guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am back with another episode of the Fisherman Fishing Planet. We are still here in St. Croix, Michigan, and we have to go ahead and get on a boat here, guys, because the other day I talked to a gentleman when I was doing some, um, some re well, I wasn't recording at the time, I was basically doing it off camera. And he gave me some hints and tips in regards to the trolling here at um, in St. Croix, Michigan. And one of the things he said is that the key things to use as far as bait are the crankbaits. Eight foot crankbaits are the best. Now, I don't have more than one of those, but I do have a three foot and when I was testing it and speaking to him I was actually being quite successful with it so we're gonna go ahead and try this out again guys we're gonna see if we can't see if we can't get some decent amount of fishing done with just trolling now I will tell you it is a little tricky, but he did give me some good pointers. His name was Snowball20, uh, I think it was 220, Snowball220. Guy gave me a lot of good of advice. He said he's been doing a lot of trolling in the game. Actually, he was really interested in the game as a result of my trolling videos that I did. Which really made me feel pretty good and tag on good. So if he discovered this as far as when he was trolling around here, I would take his advice at heart. So thank you very much, Snowball220. I appreciate your help. So I have definitely given you a shout out. But what we're going to do is we're going to get over here to the King of the Green Bay, I think that's what that's called. Always get that mistaken, but we're gonna start trolling here and based on this particular day and it's a cloudy day. Cloudy days are one of the worst, unfortunately, but we're just going into a peak here. We're at 3 p.m. approximately, and 5 p.m. is the peak. 5 and 6, I guess, somewhere around there. So we're going to see what we can do here, guys. Originally, I was going to do a video on catching unique northern pike, which I managed to catch here. Apparently, that's pretty tough, but I did catch one. But trolling is kind of a little bit different off the wall so to speak some people like it some people don't but I think since it's available in this game it needs to be checked out because it is an alternative way of fishing and I think we need to explore a little further I've done this in every other location where you can do some trolling I think this is one of the places that needs to be looked at real close so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop things here. I'll go ahead and put out my anchor anyway, just to make sure. Now, let me see here. What do I have that I can work with? I don't have a lot of the 
appropriate lures that he was talking about. I can't even purchase them from here. So I would have to leave here, go back to the main map and try to purchase them there. But I'm going to try to make work what I have. Now I do have an eight foot crankbait here. It is a floating dim green glow green in the dark, but it works very well. Let me see if there's anything I can access. I don't think I can, honestly. Ooh, I do have large minerals available. I'm going to go ahead and buy those. Honest to God, I think I need to buy a lot of those. <laughs> those are really useful. Once I get large cut bait available, I'm going to buy those too. Um, let me see here. The crankbaits. Uh, they're all 30 foot. Yep. Not much here to go with. So let's go ahead and throw it out. He said that I think it was a hundred foot he was dealing with with what he was doing with trolling, but when I tested it, anywhere between thirty and a hundred feet was working pretty well, honestly. So I think we're all right with that. If we get too far out, it's going to become problematic, I think. Let's see what we got here as far as our other rods that we can work with. He did say the 13-foot triple runner was working fairly well, so we're going to work with that as well. This is on a Thunderwind 5500. Heavy-duty rod, 42 pounds. I'm going to toss that out a little ways. And he did say the best thing that you could do is just try to do a few passes. He said the peaks really didn't seem to matter. So we're going to test that out here, guys. Hope that is the case. Because honestly, we're a little early at this point. So... If the peaks don't matter, that's probably a good thing. There we go, 1%. That's probably perfect for what we want. I went ahead and did a private map here. Now right up here, you'll see a marker. This is a good spot for clear muskie. So we're going to pass right on through here, see if that does any good for us. You'll know right away if we got something. Those rods will bend like no nobody's business. So far, nothing. Haven't seen, uh, haven't seen a thing on the fish finder. So, probably par for the course. I do have some markers up <coughs> Here, though I managed to catch some clear muskies some uniques so I went ahead and marked them when I did I mean I know it doesn't mean we'll catch a unique but it just means that that's where they're located in that particular type of species So far, things are quiet. So what we'll do is we'll skirt the outskirts of this entire bay until something decides to bite.
And it might take a while. We'll see. Alright guys, it looks like we finally hooked into something here. Got it off this jerk bait. I thought I would try the jerk bait on trolling. I didn't know if it was gonna work. But it looks like it might have. There we go. Yeah, got us a northern pike off the jerk bait. We're starting to go into the peak period, so you might actually see a little more activity here, guys. I'm going to get one more pass here. Like I said, I think I want to see just how well this does. And if anything does hold off, I will go back to the main menu and see if I can't pick up some more lures that I can't get here. Because the eight foot Craig baits, I can't find them here. 30 foot's all they've got. All right, guys, I went back to the main shopping location, purchased a few of the uh, crankbaits that are at eight foot. I got a glow in the dark and uh, I think it's kind of a silvery type that we have right here. But as you can see, it's a crankbait eight foot four aught. That is ideal. And we're going to see if we can't get something with this. Now, let's see. We have another 8-foot crankbait here. It's a glow in the dark. We're going to try to see if that doesn't do something. Honestly, it's all we have available to us at this time. Now, Snowball might have more available to him because I think he was at a higher level than I was so I'm sure he has a little bit more to go with but we'll see what this does see if this helps us in any way shape or form all I know is I do like trolling I'm hoping this works I don't know that we'll get any uniques or trophies, but at least this is a little more active. We're kind of trolling around, catching whatever we can get. I hope it's something big. That's all I can say. It looks like we have something here. Number one, there's something here. There's something here, guys. What do we got here, guys? And there's something on the other one, too. We've got a white bass. <laughs> that was not what we were counting on, but I'll tell you, I'll take it. White bass, and there's something on this one, too. Another white bass. Well, at least they're biting. That's pretty cool. Oh, wait a minute. Something is going on with two here. We have something on number two. There you go. Trophy small F bass at 740. And we've got something on number one now too. We'll keep that. We've gotten the tension of something here. And a northern pike at 838. 5.433 pounds not too bad so we're definitely 
getting some success with the trolling. There we go. We got something on number one. This is an eight foot crank bike glow in the dark. Guys, another Northern Pike. Alright, we're getting a lot of activity here on this fish finder here. Hopefully, we can catch them off this, these particular lures. Oh, shit, there we go. There we go. We are, we've got something here. Come on. Well, whatever it is, it's big enough that it's moving us. Holy crap. Trophy Northern Pike. And yeah, we'll keep him out of doubt. He was so damn strong, he moved us all the way over here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn into this. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. See if we can't attract something just as big and special. All right, wait a minute. We got something on one here. There we go. Finally, something of significance. What do we got here, guys? Northern Pike. Uh, he's not trophy, but 1510. That's pretty close. Pretty close to trophy. And let's see, we got something on number one here. There we go. What do we got here, guys? Got white bass again. Yeah, the white bass will still bite off these. Oh, okay, okay. We have got something on number one. That doesn't change direction for giggles. I think that is another white bass, though. Let me see here. Yep. Getting a lot of these little guys. It seems to be right here. If you look on the side here, right around here we're getting a lot of the white bass. That might be important to note. For future reference if we're going to try to get a unique one but I have a feeling that we're going to need to be offshore or maybe just fishing from the boat instead of trolling let's see if we can't get this thing up and going again here let's go about two percent 
I hope I sound good, guys. This is a this microphone is a little bit different. Okay, there we go, finally. Now this is clear musky territory. I kind of hope that's what we got here. Looks like a northern pike, though. I'm not complaining. I'm never going to complain about a northern pike. Trust me on that one. Just right over there is where the clear musky are found just off this dock. That's where I caught my first unique clear. I'm not sure if that's where I had marked the unique clear or if I was just for a trophy. Oh, well, I'm going a little too fast there. They're not going to bite on that. Oh, maybe they are. Let's see here. Alright, something. Another northern pike. Yeah, they're, they're coming pretty quick here now, guys. Pretty quick. Once we got ourselves a pattern, and I think that's really the trick, is getting yourself a good pattern of traveling with the trolling. We're going to keep doing this. And I think in the next episode, I might try to do some trolling out on what is represented by Lake Michigan. There we go. Damn, they're one after another now. I think we got a, a yellow perch. <laughs> okay, we haven't got one of those yet. Damn, talk about ambitious. Look at the dang on bait is as big as he is. <laughs> they all they are they're very uh ravenous little guys. I have fished for them many times in real life and they are just that. They are a lot of fun to catch and to go for pretty much anything. Yeah, they're in the same family as the walleye. Let's see, there's the walleye, the sauger, and the yellow perch. I think there's a there's others, but I don't remember all of them. But those are the most well known. Oh, of course, Xander. Xander's in the same family. Yeah, things could get interesting around here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I'm just really trying hard, there we go, to get as close to those reeds and things as I can, because that's where these guys are going to be. There you go. 1238, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, I don't know how well the trolling is going to do in the open water. And I don't know if these lures are going to work. Snowball said this area, but when I was at Moose Lake, the salmon went for it really well. I was trolling for them, and I was catching quite a few of those guys. That's the unique marker. Come on. I am getting some blips. Hey, you know. Is what you can it is. see them now, but not huge. Right below that boat, but they are blips. If you're, uh, if you okay, catch, kind of you know, if you're too far sorry. to the center here, if you're fishing bottom fishing, close. if you throw it down there or float fishing with the longest lead you have possible, you're gonna catch. 
Okay, we got a good 1%. Now, one thing I might try... I haven't tried any topwater lures. I don't know if that's going to... I mean, it did work on Tiber River. My thing is, I think it was a walker that I used there, so I don't... I don't remember if I've got any walkers in my tackle. Well, let's go around here, make another pass. Go past these. Actually, I might... Okay, I was just checking. I think I might go all the way up to the entrance there just to see what might happen. I've been turning around right around here. That looks like Pike Central to me. There's something down there. And it's big. Come on. Show some interest. Yeah, we're going to go a little further this time. I'm just going to test this out here. See, there's reeds over here, too. I have caught northern pike over here quite a bit. Especially the reeds right where the uh, canal comes in. Cast. Probably white bass. I get I do get a lot of white bass over here. Yep, and it's a trophy. There you go, guys. 566. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. Alright, I'm going to throw this back out. I think we're going to make a return trip back and out of might have to be our final pass but after this I think what we're going to do in the next episode I think we're going to try to do some trolling out there in Lake Michigan I might get the crank the bigger crankbaits the ones that go down 30 feet since it's so deep and I'd like to try to do some passes in the center of the lake if you look here and we'll zoom out a little bit but there are some deep spots that might be worthwhile passing over with the really deep crankbaits. Anyway, let's get this fi finished up here, guys. Obviously, you've seen it, it is profitable. It's different. I mean, you can get out here and do something other than just casting from the side or casting from your boat. I like it. I like it. And it took me a little, you know, I mean, it took small balls help to make it a little bit more profitable. I had tried it before, but I didn't really, I was just testing all kinds of different lures. I wasn't really using anything but three foot crankbaits, which is pretty much all I had. And uh, spoons, now I've had, I had a lot of luck with the spoons at Moose Lake. But they don't seem to really go for them as much by the trolling. I don't understand that. That's kind of strange. And we've got something. And we got something of significant size. Oh boy. Yes, we do. May have spoke too soon, guys. Well, he is pulling me all over the place. <laughs> Come on, big fella. Let's see what you are. No, he's just a regular northern pike, but he's a decent sized one. 1336. not bad. Of course, now we're all twisted up. <laughs> we have to do some finagling here. Hold on. Uh, 
let's see, I can try to toss this out this way. <laughs> Okay. Damn, he literally pulled us all the way over here. There we go. Yeah, we're going to have to kind of straighten things out a little bit here. It's amazing the strength of these fish. There's a lot of blips. A lot of blips going on. I'm trying to make sure I don't go run aground. Stay as close to that as I can. I don't know about the first one. I'm looks like it's jumping a little bit, but well, guys, I think that's probably going to be it. I don't think we're going to get any more at this point. We have passed the prime locations, but we did pretty good. We did pretty good, honestly. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And I will be back with another episode of The Fisherman Fishing Planet. So until then, guys, as I always say, aim straight, cast far, and have fun. I will see you later. Bye-bye.